Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and it goes on from now until uh, uh, midnight Eastern Time and uh, as we do at least uh, once a week, we like to talk to a friend of ours. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the dulcet tones of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Alex. Hello, Lawrence. Hello, Lawrence. Hello. Sitting in our ninth month in a row of rain here. It's wonderful. Nine month in a row. Hey, don't complain it's, about the rain. Yeah. You know, don't complain about the rain because we've had snow. It's been snowing up a snot here. It really has. So The trouble with rain, it encourages life. That's true. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> That's your that's your positive feeling about yeah. things, right, Larry? <laughs> God, so how you doing? Good. I was just reading. Uh, I was going through my uh, almanac here. Of uh, I think we did this before. I find people that entertainers that have died, and you knew all the obscure ones. <laughs> oh, all right. So do you have some new ones? I got some new ones. I heard this name before, and I just look, and he died at the age of, uh, oh my God, like 33, uh, Robert Walker. Oh, yeah, Robert Walker was uh, uh, an actor uh, who appeared in, I guess his most significant film that people would remember him in was Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. That's what I remember him from, yeah, okay. Yeah, he was. Uh, he played the guy, you know, Criss Cross, you know. Uh, he offered to kill um, uh, Mel Ferrer's. Uh, mother, uh, if if uh, he would kill his mother, and he doesn't agree to it, but the guy thinks he does, so that's where in the whole thing. It's a good film. If nobody, yeah, it's kind of a it. creepy film. I liked it. Very but. creepy, and that was Robert Walker. Yeah, thirty three. I wonder, huh? wonder how he died. Thirty three. I don't know. He was old enough to have a son because his son Robert Walker Jr. became an actor and appeared on, among other things, Star Trek. In fact, you remember that first episode of Star Trek where uh, there's this kid, Charlie, or whatever, that they find? Yeah. And, and he turns out to be evil and horrible. Uh, that, that was Robert Walker Jr. Okay. Yeah. So have I, have I uh, identified Robert Walker well enough for you here? That was very good, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, here, Anna Mae Wong. Anna Mae Wong was an actress uh, in, uh, 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 I think she first started in silent films, uh, matriculated her way to regular movies, was never a huge star, but because she was an Asian, and that was unusual in films, and because usually the leads of Asians were played by, uh, you know, people like Peter Lorre played uh, Mr. Moto, as an example. Uh uh, that uh, Asians were always portrayed usually by Americans with their eyes made to look slitty. Um, so she was unusual in, and I think, I may be wrong, I, I think she m might have been in, oh God, I'm trying to, The Good Earth. She may have been one of the actresses in The Good Earth, but I'm not I'm not sure about that. But Anna Mae Wong was a, I know, I know the actress. I, in fact, I can see her, so. But you can't see what I see, so I could be lying to you. <laughs> but isn't lying the order of the day? Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's the only way. Okay, give me another name. Okay, well, uh, I know this guy. He's actually one of my favorite. He wasn't really a stand-up comic, but he died on stage, uh, Dick Sean. Dick Sean. Well, Dick Sean, uh, the fa famous death. Famous yeah. death. Because what happened was he was on stage... And he was doing his act, and he was always known as a wacky comic, very improvisational, you know, and so on. And so he then grabbed his chest and said, oh, I think I'm having a heart attack. And he fell to the ground and, and just laid there, and everybody was laughing. Yeah, they thought it was a bit, so they, they let it, it go for about five minutes. <laughs> they let it go for about five minutes and went over and 
checked his pulse and he was dead. So talk about dying on stage. <laughs> Which we've all done before. But, but what, what every comedian should have is kind of a signal he can give about this is really a heart attack. <laughs> you know, I'm not just doing a bit here. You know, but he he's a guy. Everybody thought he was, you know. Yeah. So anyway, next. Uh, Will Gear. Will Gear. Will Gear has a great history. Um, Will Gear uh, was basically the he was considered a communist. Uh, he he was an actor who he wound up on uh, what was that little that thing where they went the wall the Waltons Waltons. Uh, Lame show. <laughs> yeah, well, he was always the venerable grandfather in most things, even when he was like in his thirties. I mean, he was, you know, but he was uh, he was friends with the Weavers. I think he maybe even at times sung with them. Pete Seeger's pal, you know, the whole commie group back in the day. Uh, uh, and these weren't just lefties, folks. These were com <laughs> these were fucking commies. Um, but. Uh, he was a. I always liked him as an actor. He uh, he appeared in a film, a very strange film that John Frankenheimer did called Seconds, in which uh, uh, Rock Hudson plays a an old. Well, it starts off with a guy by the name of uh, Randolph. I'm trying to remember his first name. The actor uh, who is an old older man, and he goes to this company which will kind of offer you seconds. What they do is they uh, kill you off or at least make it look like you died, and then they send you to this place where they do this intensive uh, physical therapy and 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 uh, surgical uh, change so that you come out looking like, and in this case, Rock Hudson. And, uh, yeah, and him, was, that was a good movie. Was I, a, I thought it was a great movie. I mean, for its time, it, it doesn't age well, but for its time, it was a terrific film. Uh, and uh, the Will Gear played the guy who was the head of the company, who was always counseling him, there, there, dear boy, don't worry about this. You're going to be fine. You know, we all have to. He's very wise and so on. And and just a superb role for Will Gear. So anyway, that that's 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 my knowledge of Will Gear. Is that good enough for you? That was good. He was he, he was a very yeah. He was, I think he was a hardcore comic, right? <laughs> He was a hardcore comic? Commie. Commie, commie, yeah, yeah. Does does it say anything in there about him being a lefty? No, it just, ha just has the name and the day they were born and died. So yeah. uh, These people might not have been communists as much as they were really hardcore lefties, you know? Um but uh, it's 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 interesting uh, that uh, um, he was. Uh, I don't know if he got caught up in that whole, uh, you know, um, blacklist thing. I think he did. He had to have because he was that much of a lefty. Um, but uh, he was. I always liked him as an actor. Always, always was very fond of him. So. Uh, well, Mort, Mort Saul told me, he said, all the good writers in Hollywood in the 30s and 40s were all communists. <laughs> well, what it was, I'll tell you what it was. This was the, the, the truth of the matter was that back then we were coming out of a depression in which people were starving. And they were looking for answers because obviously this capitalistic system had failed them. Okay. And they were looking for answers. And a lot of people flirted with communism at that time. It was not unusual. Um, right. A lot of people did it. My father, who was very much a lefty, said he never did it because he didn't like communism because he felt it wasn't it, it was working too hard for somebody else's ideology, you know, that, that it was really a Russian thing. And he wanted uh, solutions for America. Uh, but he was never anti-communist. OK, so uh, but anyway. Um, uh, a lot of people became communists for a short time during that period of time. So now it comes to the 50s, and these people decide they're going to go on a witch hunt for communists, right? And the question wasn't, are you now a communist? The question was, have you ever been or are you now a communist? And uh, it, the problem was that way back when, yeah, maybe I joined the Communist Party for about a week and a half, and then I saw it was a stupid idea, and I didn't do it anymore. But no, you were meant. You suffered for that, you know. 
And mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, I hated that whole period of time. I mean, when I was a kid, I always talk about the fact that one of the most indelible incidents in my life was my father went down to City Hall in San Francisco to protest the House on American Activities Subcommittee. And so I went with him. You know, little little red diaper baby oh. Bennett went yeah. with him. And uh, while my father was out protesting, I said, I'm going to go inside and see what's happening. And he said, go ahead. I, I think I was maybe, God, I think I was 12, 13, something like that, you know. So I went up uh, uh, to, the, to the room where they were holding the hearings, and I sat there watching them. And um, one of the people they brought up was a guy who I knew because I loved radio, and I loved the people who were on radio, and he did the morning show at uh, what was then uh, KQW, which later became WCBS. And um, he was doing the morning show. It was called San Francisco Story, and it was stories about the history of California and San Francisco. And he would tell these little stories for a half hour. And I love the show. And they bring this guy up, and they say, are you now, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? He says, I refuse to testify under the... Uh, uh, under the um, uh, what do you call it uh, that it may Fifth Amendment. Be, uh, Fifth Amendment that may tend to incriminate me and the next day I tune on to that show and he's not there <laughs> he's not there and he's not there the day afterwards and he's not there the day afterwards and I never heard from him again I, can't, I wish I could remember his name some people have brought up the name to me and I forgot it uh, but geez I mean it was really uh, it, it was a lesson to me because I couldn't figure the whole thing out. What This guy, if he was a communist, there wasn't any propaganda on the show he was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and so I found that that was a lesson to me. And, and from that time on, I hated witch hunts. Uh, it, yes, and now we're. I think we're going through a new one with, uh, you know, you, if you made a sexist comment 40 years ago, you get fired it, it, today. Yeah, it's the Me Too movement is very uh, McCarthyite, you know. Yeah. Uh, have you now or have you ever made a pass at a woman? Yes, I did back in 1940. Well, you know, me too, you're out of work, <laughs> you know. We're taking your statue down. <laughs> you know, there should be, you know what was... It, look, I never considered what the Me Too people are complaining about. I never found right to begin with. So I never engaged in that kind of uh, activity. OK, I, I was always very uh, decent towards women. If I came on to a woman, I wasn't pushy about it. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, but nevertheless, I bet there's some women out there who actually could come up with a, oh, Alex Bennett, this one particular time, blah, 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 you know, they could probably do it. But I mean, sure. I, I'm, I don't think I've ever been guilty of anything like that. If anything, I've been guilty of like giving up too easily. Oh, know? me too. It's of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, in fact, uh, what was it? Somebody said ben, Bennett's great with women, except he doesn't know how to close the deal. Yeah, <laughs> I think we both had that uh, moniker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't know how to close the deal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, so this this idea of uh, it, it's very reminiscent to me of the McCarthy era, or uh, and I don't like it to be called McCarthyism because really the biggest thing going was the House on American Activity Subcommittee. They took their show on the road and went from town to town, obliterating. They were going after show business. In fact, when yeah. you see those things with the those hearings in, in Washington that they always show, that wasn't McCarthy. McCarthy was just, he was investigating communism in the army. And that's all he was doing. But somehow the whole thing became known as the McCarthy era. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, more names. Lupe Velez. Uh, I, I recognize I recognize the name. I've seen her in films. I couldn't name a single one of them right now, but I know the name. You know, I'm familiar Nin with you. 1908 to 1944. She died then, huh? Yeah. 30, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. If you go back to you watch Turner Classic Movies, you'll see a couple of Lupe Velez films. They probably do a Lupe Velez Film Festival on TCM, you know. <laughs> And uh, one of my favorites, uh, this is not a... This is a by the way, by the way, interest, interesting, I was watching TCM. To show you how obscure they get, 
they were running a John Bowles festival. A whole night of nothing but films by John Bowles. John Bowles. Now, how many people out there can name a film John Bowles was in? I can. I never heard of him. He was in King of Jazz with Paul Whiteman, um, which was uh, 1931, I think. Uh, and uh, But, you know, the, the, they get so obscure on TCM that they had a John Bowles festival the other night, so... I was delighted. I, I had missed all those John Bowles films. Anyway, so Lupe Velez is one of those that, yeah, I know the name. I just okay. don't, I, I can't place her. You she know. sounds hot, but I could be wrong. Well, of course, she has that the hot firecracker Latin name, <laughs> Lupe Velez, you know. Um, and, I, you know, we were mentioning black, uh, we were mentioning Asians in films. Uh, the fact was that the 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 uh, Spanish were also kind of they were tolerated in Hollywood and they were in films because they were hot, both the males mm -hmm. and the females, but they were never given the major roles in most cases. I mean, Ricardo Montalban, it was always with Ricardo Montalban, you know, and uh, Carmen Miranda. Well, Carmen Miranda was a star. She was a big star. And uh, I don't know if you know this, Jewish. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, she was really, she was authentically from South America, but uh, she had Jewish parents. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I always loved Carmen Miranda. I thought she was really talented, you know, in those hats. <laughs> <laughs> the fruity hats. Yeah. When, when, when bananas become uh, an item of fashion, you got to know it's, you know, it's pretty good. But anyway, so okay, and uh, this next guy, uh, well known, but uh, I've got to watch these uh, reruns, and they're, it's bad writing and bad acting. Raymond Burr. Well, Raymond Burr, I actually met Raymond Burr once uh, when I was in Armed Forces Radio. I think I either interviewed him or he came down to uh, the uh, uh, to be be interviewed or whatever. All I know is I met up with him once, and I I think it was at his home. I think I, we went to record something at his home, and I remember him wearing a big caftan, because Raymond Burr, when he wasn't Perry Mason, was the most. Uh, how can we put it this way? Flagrant gay person <laughs> I had ever met. I mean, he was so swish. Wow. You know. <laughs> and usually if you were homosexual and you were in films, you you kind of maintain that that macho flavor that you portrayed on the screen. I mean, we all know Rock Hudson was gay, but you never saw the gayness, you know. And I'm sure privately he wasn't that swish either, okay? Uh, but, man, Raymond Burr was, hello, everybody. Here's... <laughs> You know, he was he was flamboyant. I think that's the term we use, flamboyant. Um, <laughs> but uh, Raymond Burr was, of course, Raymond, Raymond, you want a little trivia for Raymond Burr? He was in the first Godzilla movie. Really? Yes. Uh, they, it, here's what happened. He was, he was in the first Godzilla movie, but he wasn't. When it was released in China, as, as in Japan, rather, as Gojira, uh, it was just an all Japanese movie, okay? And really, the film was not meant to be a horror film and a monster film as much as a a uh, cry against atomic uh, uh, power, okay? And what it could do. You could unleash this giant monster. But by the time it came to the United States, they had to do an Americanized version, so they th refilmed some scenes uh, with uh, with an American, so that he was in there with all the Japanese, and there was the, the you were kind of following him, all right. And so the remake for the American audiences had Raymond Burr in it as the star. So that there's a little piece of trivia for you. And, Did I uh, go far uh, enough on Raymond Burr for you? That was good. And uh, the, what nine years on Perry Mason? Yeah. Well, come on, stump me already. Okay, this is, I like this for some reason as a kid. I thought this guy was funny. A bald guy, uh, kind of had a funny attitude, Fred Clark. Well, Fred Clark, we all know pretty much. I mean, most people know Fred Clark. Uh, 
Fred Clark wound up on one of the Lucy shows uh, as her. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't Fred Clark. Uh, Fred, that was somebody else. Uh, but Fred Clark, I'm trying to tell you the movies he was in. I know Fred Clark. I can see his face right in front of me right now. But he was also, you know, a lot of these actors were always had the with status. They were never, they never starred in a film. Uh, and I'm trying to think. Let me, let me look up Fred Clark a second because I'm trying to remember the films he was in. I can't remember what he was in, but I just remember as a kid I'd see him, and for some reason I thought he was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Where kind of a cranky guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he, he had a mustache, and he always yeah. played cranky people. He usually had a cigar. He, he, uh, no, I don't think he had a cigar. I don't remember a cigar with Fred Clark. Uh, Clark. Uh, let me see here. Clark. I think, was it with an E? Fred Clark. No oh, E. There we go. Self, uh, let's see, Fred Clark. Uh, I can't find him. Huh. Well, he Fred really Clark. Oh, at Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, there he is. He was in Sunset Boulevard. Oh, he was? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, he did a lot of things. He was, you know, he was on a lot of shows. He, he died. He had to have died in like 19... When did he, when did he die? Uh, 1968. He was 54. He was 54. Yeah. Wow, that's young. Yeah. He was on the Beverly Hillbillies. He played Dr. Roy Clyburn. He was on F Troop. He was on uh, uh, Bonanza. He, you know... He was in the movie Skidoo. Uh, if, if you, if, if he, if I showed you his face, everybody would know exactly. You've seen him, you know. You go, that, that was a guy I've seen. Okay, next. Yeah, Victor Buono. Oh, big fat guy, another gay guy, very gay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe went out with Perry Mason. <laughs> that pr probably was vying for the rule of most flamboyant with with Raymond Burr. Uh, uh, Victor Buono well, in the in the recent thing they did about Betty Davis and Joan Crawford on TV Betty and Joan uh, Bono yeah. plays a very big part in that story uh, in that he was in um, uh, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane uh, big fat guy uh, yeah he did have a yeah. big part yeah, he did not come across though as gay on screen uh, but according to like Will and uh, this uh, Joan and, and Bet thing they did, uh, he he they they play him as having been really gay and just hiding it, you know, all the time. Mm -hmm. So that was dead Victor at dead at forty four. Dead at forty four. God. As was this next guy, uh, John Candy. John, well, John Candy, we don't have to even, you know, if, I don't know. No, but John, thing yeah. interesting about John Candy, his father, he and his brother all died at the age of 44. He had a strong heart attack factor. <laughs> the, wow. You would have thought that if his father died at 44, John Candy would have taken better care of himself. Yeah. Saying, you know, my father went at 44 and my, what, his brother went at 44? And his brother, they all went at 44. And was his brother, did he die before him or after him? That I don't know. I think but, before. But you would just think if you had people dying at 44 in your family, you would hit 44 and you would say, you know, I'm, I'm really going on a diet. <laughs> you, know? Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to eat too many candy bars this year. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he went really young. Yeah. And uh, good, good in everything he did. Yeah, I think he was he was he was a terrific sketch actor, you know, yeah. and he was lucky enough to be a sketch actor, who became a star. I mean, he could he could uh, open a picture as they as the term goes. He could sell tickets, so that was really good. Okay, we got time for one more. Anita Louise. Anita Louise. Actually, we have time for well, do we have time for one more? Anita Louise. Uh, 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 this one. You're getting me on. I know the name, okay, but I couldn't tell you anything she did. Okay, uh, you would definitely know this guy, uh, Mel Blank. Well, I had l lunch with Mel Blank uh, years ago. Uh, Al Goldstein, when I was at doing Midnight Blue at Screw Magazine, 
said to me, uh, Mel Blanc's coming to town. He loves Screw Magazine. He loves me, but I can't really? go out. I can't, he says, I can't go out to lunch with him. So uh, would you take him out to lunch? So I said, sure. So I meet up with him, and there he is, and we're, we're, we're having the lunch, and he's doing you would think this guy would just say, please don't ask me to do Bugs Bunny. Don't ask me to do Daffy Duck or whatever. He's ordering his food as Bugs Bunny. He's asking for his dessert as Daffy Duck. I mean, he's doing all the voices. Was it annoying the waitress? <laughs> I, 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 the waitress didn't know what to think because she didn't know who Mel Blanc was, but she did know the sounded like Bugs Bunny, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh and the funniest part about it was he had these little, you know those little joke cards they used to have that were dirty joke cards? Yeah. Remember, yeah. they were little cards with dirty jokes on them and dirty cartoons on them. He had them in his pocket, and he would keep pulling them out and showing them to me. Damn. <laughs> yeah. That was... That's, no, I, thought, I thought it was Mr. Family Guy with the... Oh, boy. <laughs> did I identify Mel Blank well enough for you? Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, well, listen. And we, probably the biggest, uh, maybe the biggest voice star of all time? Uh, I would say so, easily. I mean, he's the, he's the king of the uh, cartoon voices, you know? Either him or Tom Kenny. <laughs> uh, well, now, yeah. Yes. Anyway, hey, Bubs. Thank you. I can't stump you on these names. You, you're not stumping me at all, but geez, you know. I'm, I, but you always have something in it. That's why I like it. You know so many interesting things about these people. It's great. Right. Anyway, uh, hey, I got to go. Thank okay. you, Bubs. We'll bye bye. See you next week. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. There we go. There's Bubbles, and uh, there's uh, some stories about uh, movie stars. And I love it when we get together and he pulls that stuff on me and says, do you know so-and-so, and do you know so-and-so? And, -so? and uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I did uh, know Mel Blanc. Yes. I'm more than just who he is, but uh, having had lunch with him. That was, that was a, when I think about it, that was a thrill for me. That was a real thrill. Anyway, I've opened up the uh, the lines here. Um, I'm uh, trying to uh, uh, clean things up here so that I'm clearing the decks for you guys to call. Uh, if you don't know how to call this program, it's a very simple proposition, folks. All you do is you go to... Uh, um, uh, if, if you want to find out exactly how to do it, go over to gabnet.net. And on that page, uh, on the right-hand side, complete tutorial on how to call the program. It's no big deal. It's very simple. The worst part is having to download and use Skype. But uh, that, will, uh, that will allow you to call us and to talk with us and to be part of the citizen panel, which is not m one, not two people talking to me, but a whole bunch of people. Um, I understand with the new Skype, if I ever go to it, that I can have as many as 24 people on at a time, that I would not want, okay? Because that's just, that's just noise, okay? <laughs> mm. And I don't know why they figure anybody would want to have 25 people on a, on a, on a conference call at the same time. I, I, I really don't know. But anyway, hey, look who's calling first tonight. This is a, this is a treat. Uh, you're usually um, um, not the first, Josh Wheeler, but tonight you are. Well, that's good, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you're you're where again? I'm trying to remember. I'm I'm terrible with these things. Uh, where I live, um, I live about uh, twenty minutes drive south of uh, Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay. So you're in Ohio. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, we were talking the other day about Ohio because, you, you know, New York City uh, refused to take or didn't want to get uh, the Amazon business here. Right. And, right. and so we were we were talking about it and uh, 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 we said, why didn't why didn't Amazon go to like Columbus, Ohio? Why well, didn't they, they go to you they know, put in they put in for it here? Yeah. 
And uh, they have a couple uh, massive distribution centers here. Not just one. They have like three. Yeah. So, uh, you know. So they tried. And Columbus is already the home to a few other major, you know, things. Uh, so that, you know, they when they put in that kind of yeah. was one of their selling points or whatever. Like uh, Nationwide Insurance, for example. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest insurance companies in America. They're. Yeah, they're headquartered. By the way, let me say hello to Dave Shuck. Are you there, Dave? <sighs> Dave, are you there? Can you hear us, Dave? All I get is a is a still picture of Dave. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, even. See Dave that. was a regular caller to this program at one time, so I'm just wondering why he's not getting through tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we just lost yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, they they tried, but I guess they, you know, obviously well, they didn't win. So now, I don't know if they maybe they will now. Well, now supposedly New York is begging to get their business back, and well, would, and we <clears throat> we were so happy they decided to not do it. You know that they finally realized that the community didn't want them here, because our question is, you know, New York is, you go out to where you live, and if you want to build something like an Amazon fulfillment center, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you have all the room in the world to build something like that and all the room for expansion of population that's going to have to come in and fill those 25,000 jobs. Imagine uh, Long Island City, which is Queens, basically, and an influx of 25,000 people who want to work there. There's no place for them to live. They on what what Amazon's going to pay them. They can't afford to live there, you know. So I mean, what, what was what was going through anybody's mind on this? You know, it was a it was a bad idea, and now New York's begging, please come back, Amazon. What? Are you out of your mind? I mean, Jeff, you know the area. Do you think that could take the influx of, of 25,000 workers every day? Well, I used to work there. Yeah. Many times, and my dad used to work there, too. And uh, there's a lot of factories and places that used to have jobs there. Yeah. And so as far as the Long Island City area... <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's got enough area to run the facilities. Yeah, but but think of the think of the pressure on transportation, the subway system. Uh, you know, the fact that these people are not going to be able to live in Long Island City. I mean, maybe when you used to live there, it was cheap, but it's not anymore. You know, so they they're going to get those those jobs to pay thirty five, forty thousand dollars a year, and where are they going to live? You know, so yeah. uh, going to a place like uh, Illinois, and here was the shitty thing that Amazon did. They had all these cities like Cincinnati and, and smaller cities putting in the bids and spending like a couple of million bucks on the presentations and on all the work that it took to try and get the business. And they, they finally settled on Washington, D.C. and New York City. They never had any intention of going out to these other cities. And it was terrible what they did to them, you know. Then if I couldn't get stuff so cheap from Amazon, I'd stop buying stuff from them. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Oh, hi, you know, there's Dave Shuck. Hi, Dave. Haven't seen you in a long time. I haven't been around. Uh, you can hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Just great. Can hear you, see you. Uh, <sighs> it's, uh, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. It is indeed. It is yes. indeed. Uh, but anyway, let... let uh, uh, let, let's finish with what we were saying. Yes. Anyway. Well, I was going to say that the uh, transportation. Yeah. As far as the city uh, train system, it's in trouble right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you're going to put another twenty-five thousand people trying to get on the train. Yeah. And by the way, did we add the fact that the in city of New York was going to give Amazon three billion dollars? Cheap money in in either tax rebates or or whatever 
you know, I'm sorry. We need we we. You're right. The subways need fixing. We could use that three billion to fix the goddamn subways. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I don't know what they offered around here. I mean, I, I, I thought that. Didn't Amazon like at the end there release like their final fifteen or something along those lines? Yeah, I mean, it was like yeah, and then when it. And, and uh, Columbus made, you know, they were in that cut, you know, so it was, it was, you know, close, but mm -hmm. they, they didn't get it. But uh, I mean, this is a pretty big area, though. I mean, now don't get me wrong; I'm not going to try to say it's like New York City, um, right. because nothing is like, you know, New York right. City, obviously. Right. But uh, it's pretty overcrowded. It's getting overcrowded in that area now. I mean, it, the people that live there and that are moving in. Mm -hmm for those kinds of things are starting to encroach on basically the area that I live in, Yeah, you know, which is, you know, you have to get in a car and drive, you know, 25 minutes in a certain direction and you're here. And then, you know, where my property ends that I actually own, uh, the, the other side of that property line is cornfield, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I live in a pretty rural area, but uh, those people are starting to show up and buy from those farmers and, and it's starting to get some warehouses and stuff within, I mean, they're within like maybe five miles of our rural area now. So it's been growing this way since I was a little kid. And, uh, I guess it'll keep going that I, I keep saying, you know, when I can see the warehouses from my house, I'm leaving, you know, because I didn't want to live in that environment, but I hope that never happens because I'll have my house and everything paid for. I really don't want to move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just uh, I I just don't understand, uh, you know, why why they made all these cities give out with these bids, and then the two cities they pick are 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 not what we call highly impacted cities. Okay, yeah. uh, I mean, I understand well, that you know Columbus has a lot of problems. And Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland has a lot of problems. And I could name a few other cities they could have gone to. Try Detroit. Right. You know, Detroit. They were looking at Kansas City. Huh? They were looking they, at Kansas City as well. That's right. Yeah. And so all these people were going, oh, we might get the bid. No, you were never in the mix. They were just trying to act like they were being good neighbors, you know. I mean, it's bullshit. Like to, like to have their ass kissed, I guess, just like anybody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It turned yeah. out turned out also that the two places they picked are all within, what, three miles of where, what's his name, who runs the company, lives. He has a place in Washington, and he has a place in New York, and all these places <laughs> were within three miles of where he works. What's right. his name? Uh, uh Bezos. Bezos, yeah. 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 yeah I mean they they uh I mean that's but that's I guess you said, you know, you didn't know why they did it, but I just because they can, I guess. I mean Well you know. Yeah. <laughs> so now now all of a sudden New York is begging for them to come back and I'm going, What are you doing? We got rid of them. Stop it. Yeah. You know? I don't think they. I don't think they will because there was. I mean, if they made the decision to leave already, I, I don't think they're going to change their mind. Well, they they never did anything much to move in either. You right. know, so I mean, uh, it wasn't like I don't. I don't know if they even bought the building at that point or if they owned it. It you know certainly they can unload it. You know. Yeah. Uh, plus, I mean, I just I don't know. I you know I just it's. The whole nature of business has changed all around the country. That you know, and people are going to have to get used to this. That uh, you know, that the the big box stores. I'm surp I'm surprised that certain big box stores are still around. I mean, can you you know, Best Buy? They should have been out of business a couple of years ago. There's some kind of good management going on there, though, because here's what they do, and here's why I go to Best Buy. I want to buy something. I go on Amazon, I see what the price is, I go down to Best Buy, I say, here's the price on Amazon, and they meet it. Oh. And I don't have to wait for it to get delivered to me, and I, you know, I don't have to wait several days. And um, mm -hmm. I'm dealing at least with a business that's paying some people locally to work it. So why should, why should I, you know, why should I go to Amazon to buy my big electronics if I can get it just as cheap by 
just sh showing. I, I I I used to refer to Best Buy as my Amazon showroom. <laughs> and then they got smart and realized everybody was coming in to see what something looked like, play with it, and then go home and use Amazon to buy it. But now Amazon's meeting the price. So while you're there, you may as well just go on your iPhone, see what the price is at Amazon, show it to them, and walk out of there with the same price you would have gotten on Amazon. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think that's where they've been kind of smart. Uh, plus, they do have an online presence in which they will sell you uh, stuff online. And uh, they will deliver it the next day, you know, with people installing it. Like if you buy a TV set, they'll come and install the TV set for you. So why should I buy it on Amazon if I can get it for the same price at Best Buy? So that's where they got smart. But I, all these other big, Payless Shoes is gone. Hi, hi. Hey, it's Brian. He's in it a, He's not at home, though, obviously. He's no, so I'm, I'm actually in my apartment. Oh, you are? You, you are in your apartment. Oh, I've never seen it. I'm, I don't think we've ever seen the ceiling. You know. But anyway, so where was <laughs> where, where was I? So... Um, uh, you know, I mean, I, uh, for instance, Payless Shoes is going out of business. Pennies is, I don't think, I think they, they, I think the person who, uh, somebody was running Pennies just bought it rather than let, let the stores go out of, uh, out of business. Are there any Woolworths left? Huh? Nothing I mean, I know. Uh, no. and what other company was going? Oh, Sears Roebuck is going. Sears is done, yeah, right? Sears is yeah. toast. Yeah. And for good reason, for very, very good like, reason. It, if you've had to deal with them at all for any kind of appliance issues, they were just, they, they were the worst. They were the worst. Really? They, they have great prices and zero support and no help. And they're, they, they default to, well, we need to see the original copy of the receipt, not the, not a, not a Xerox copy of, of the original receipt. And we're like, okay, here it is, but it's faded out because it's three years old. And they're like, well, we can't vow, you know. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, that would do it. That would do it. That would kill their business. I'll tell you, though. Yeah. So good for them for going out of bit, pushing themselves out of business as fast as they of, could. Of all the businesses in this country prior to the big Internet boom, who could have competed the best against Amazon because they already had it in place? That would be Sears and Roebuck because they had that Sears and Roebuck catalog. That was yeah. Amazon before Amazon ever existed. Every year you get this big, huge, thick book <laughs> with everything from gingham, <laughs> you know, to <laughs> needles to whatever. And then you would, uh, I, I don't know if you had to go to Sears Roebuck to get them or whether they would actually send them to you. Do you remember consumers distributing? No. In San Francisco, consumers distributing. Mm -hmm. It was a catalog-only place. They had retail locations all over the place, but you just come into this cramped little room in the front and fill out a slip and hand it to them, and they would go into this vast building behind and check through the inventory, and they'd be gone for 20 minutes before they came back and said, oh, no, I'm sorry, we're all out of those. <laughs> and that was apparently their entire business model. <laughs> they never sold anything in their 20 years of business because they were all out of them. It was empty buildings. It was all a gigantic prank. Yes, Charlie. I got my first credit card from Sears back in 1971. Really? Still paying on it? <laughs> no, still, no. Still paying the minimum payments? No, I, I canceled that card well, years there ago. Was a time. I, I, I used to buy all my tools and stuff, those, those craftsman tools. I used to buy all the time from Sears. Well, yep. supposedly their products were considered pretty good. I mean, you buy a dishwasher, a washer and dryer yeah. from them. I bought and supposedly, three four refrigerators. It, supposedly they lasted a long time. Uh, and when they had service on them, it was it was a good deal all the way around. But uh, uh, it it's, you know, it's just it's kind of amazing, you know. The, yeah, they were. Well, but it, it's just the natural evolution of things. I mean, they were a giant, right? Yeah. It, now they're a dinosaur, and there's a new yeah. giant, I mean, which is Amazon. And I, I know everyone thinks it's absolutely ridiculous, but I don't know. I suppose if I live long enough, and 70 years from now, Amazon will probably 
probably be some show talking about Amazon going fucking out of business. Or Do whatever. you remember when the people yeah. thought there was that, that Walmart was the pinnacle of of retail sure. sales in the world? Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally, and nobody thought no one will ever set them. We'll will put them off their off their throne. Yep, done. Now they're well, kind I of. Like, I mean, they're there, but. Uh, yes, J- uh, Brian. No, I still think Walmart has Amazon cornered on the brick and mortar retail, uh, and that's why I, I I half joking half jokingly refer to uh, Amazon as the Crips and the uh, Walmart as the Bloods. Yeah, and that's probably what it's going to be. But it, yeah, but how much? How much? That yeah, what? As big as Walmart is, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I've always found, like their website sucks. If you ask me, oh, yeah. like their website, fuck, is it's fucking scary. terrible. I mean, uh, it's but like you don't get anything from Amazon offline, and like uh, Whole Foods or something. It's just they they don't have the infrastructure in place either. So right, you know. Yeah. But so it's like when I buy yeah. on the internet from Amazon, easy, right from my phone, you know. So whatever. Like Walmart's websites, fucking well, terrible. I mean, so it's just weird how, like Brian, you know, they've got the whole physical location thing down, and then. And Amazon, you know, has the internet, but I don't know. Amazon's going to try to get into the stores. It sounds like, really. Oh yeah. Well, I, the reason why Amazon bought up Whole Foods was so they could deliver food. You know, so they, they because the one area they couldn't really serve were people who wanted uh, to buy food, meat, whatever, and because they couldn't get it to them fast enough, so that that, that wasn't a workable model. But once they bought Whole Foods, you can order and get it within three hours because there's a Whole Foods near you, and that's their distribution point. So, you know. But they're they're apparently now going to and try to invest themselves into like regular grocery stores, is my understanding. Well, that that, that, that too. I mean, you know, not just the Whole Foods, uh, you know, which. I, I don't shop at or whatever. I mean, some people might, but uh, like just apparently like regular grocery store, like your normal run of the mill style. Uh, yeah. I guess. Well, to show you how simply these things all started, you know, Amazon started by selling books. That's all they sold were books. That was it. And look at what they've become. eBay was a group of people that got together, a woman who started it, Meg Whitman, I think was her name, uh, and her husband started it to sell Pez dispensers. You know, uh, people would would, would uh, go online and they would trade Pez, Pez dispensers. That was the whole th- methodology to the site. And then all of a sudden one day they said, well, if this works, you know, why don't we let people like try and sell other stuff too? Before you knew it, eBay had a big business going for them. But uh, didn't Meg Whitman run for California Senate? Uh, yeah, I, she, I mean, senator from California against Barbara, Barbara Boxer. She also ran for governor. Look at that! My, how she's grown, right? I, I know. Yeah, yeah. The last time you called, how old was she? It was. Uh, I I haven't called in in eighteen months. I'm sorry. They do grow fast, don't they? Yeah. 12. 12? Oh, oh. And I just smacked her with my ear thing. Yeah. So, uh. Hi. Hi. So, uh, how have you been? Do you remember me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you're 12. And, um, what grade are you in now? I'm in sixth grade. Uh Uh-huh. Still homeschooled. Or homeschooled again. Oh, yeah. oh, you're homeschooling. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then you'll probably wind up being smarter than the other kids. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Um, but uh, um, it's it's uh, it's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you guys again. Actually, you're the youngest person who's ever been on this uh, citizen panel. R- really? Yeah. So let me ask you some of the citizen panel stuff. So what do you think of Donald Trump? Oh, oh, oh. It's even gotten to kids. Mm. <laughs> I don't quite like him. Yeah, what is it you don't like about him? To say it nicely. Him? What is it you don't like about him? Family. I've heard a lot of things. Yeah, like what? 
one large thing is the whole wall thing. That, I think, is just kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just... I personally don't think he's a... I don't think he is thinking about the actual good of the country, for the country. Mm -hmm. He's mostly thinking for himself and how he can get more popular. God, what a wise kid. Yeah. Did your father, like, indoctrinate you with all this, or <laughs> did you come to this opinion on your own? I came to this my, by myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, you realize, you see, I'm 79 years old. Is that That's really old, isn't it? Uh, well, thank you for being so nice. Uh, uh, but uh, and, and so, you know, how many years do I have to worry about this? But you're going to have to live with whatever this guy does. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, that's one of the reasons I'm not not too happy about him. <laughs> that's a great kid you got there, Dave. <laughs> yeah, you taught her well. I'm a bit scared about my future. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, what a what a great kid! Uh, yes, yeah, she's she's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Do you have other kids too? Uh, see you. Good night. Uh, well, we had an older. We have Danielle. Danielle is uh, Christine's oldest daughter. She's almost thirty now, and she hates our guts. So, why does she hate she, your guts? Um, because she got an audience of people that that is really into victimhood, and suddenly we became these horrible, abusive parents. Even though, and she just made up this complete fictional past. I don't know. It's it's complete pain. You know that does but, happen. Um, that does happen. I I knew a woman once who somehow somebody convinced her she had been abused as a child, mm -hmm. and and uh, she came to this uh, feeling. And uh, then she tried to tell me, well, you were probably abused as a child. And I said, no, my, my, my father, my, I said, my father yelled, you know. But that's not abuse. And she that's... said, well, that's abusive. Okay. So, you know, well, I, yeah. This is Angie. Yeah. Angie is our new foster daughter oh wow and she's been with us for nearly a year yeah and she's turned three with us mm -hmm. and um if things don't work out with her mother getting custody back mm -hmm. she's going to be ours oh really yeah wow she's she's a she's a very sweet little girl she's very intelligent yeah um and so we're what does her mother that's... have to do to get custody back, and does her mother want custody back? I don't want to get into too many details because I don't know the woman's full history. Mm -hmm. um, but she's she would have to jump through a whole lot of hurdles mm -hmm. and be a lot more. Uh, she'd have. Uh, she gets a visit every weekend, and she's missed in the last year. She's missed about half of them. Wow. Okay. And the court right. and the court is going to take that into account. Yeah. The fact that half the time, and for like sometimes three and four yeah, weeks in a row, she simply would disappear and no one could find that's her. That's got to be rough on you, though. I mean, you make an investment emotionally in a child, uh, who eventually might be taken away from you. So you have to live with, I guess, live with that possibility. So I think it's very giving of you. The goal is reunification. The goal is reunification, and we have to ha we had that drilled into us in the classes. Reunification is the goal. Separate the kids, give the parents some time to, to deal with their shit, straighten their lives up, and then bring the kid back in. And you know, well, reunification is the object. That's what they told Kim Jong Un. So, <laughs> you know. okay. so, well, if it happens, if it happens, and she goes back, she's had some great times with us. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we want to keep her forever. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but it's been a big year. We just, uh, my my father-in-law mm -hmm. had lived with us for about two and a half years. 
mm-hmm. and he fell down on the snow. He slipped on the ice and he landed on his shoulder and he shattered the socket mm-hmm. into a whole bunch of pieces. And they um, so they had him on pain meds and he fell three or four more times inside our house within a day. And we had to have him put into assisted living. I thought you were going to say we had to put, have, have him. Put. We had to put him down. Yes, <laughs> that's what I thought you were going to say. Out onto the we had to put him down. Pillow. You know, well, the polar bears were already smelling him. They were lining up right there on the banks. That goes but, um, along with my other joke about I had a dog once. I had to put down. So it told him that he was a lousy dog. <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, uh, yes. Brian, I just, uh, if uh, Tony's listening, this is advice he could. Uh, we we always, you guys always uh, razz him about his mom, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giving you, you, this guy here is giving him ideas on how to how to yeah. do that. Yeah, uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but that's a, that's a that's an adorable daughter you have there. She is just both yeah. of them. Both of them are fantastic, and yeah. they're just good people. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And um, I lost 40 pounds. The, Hooray. Oh, really? I lost 60. You look great. Since I've, I've, I've lost see you on 40. Facebook. Huh? I said since November, I've lost 40. So You yeah. look like you've lost weight. Yeah. Way to go, man. How you, How did you do it? Well, there's a bit of a story attached. Uh, uh, to, uh, for a little while, it was uh, because I wasn't working. It was fasting and depression and anxiety but the other part was uh then i started realized i had lost uh 25 or so pounds because of that then i then i started uh the dieting and exercising part um uh, and uh now i have a job i that's why i haven't called in a month uh and uh so yeah that's uh, things kind of took an upturn from you know, the first two months versus the last two. Well, that's good. I mean, I mean, uh, part of it is, I mean, uh, you're gay. Uh, and if I, uh, if I had to give blowjobs, I don't think I'd be able to eat either. You know, so. <laughs> well, well, semen is a natural appetite. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you set yourself up for that, mother. Yeah, I sure did set myself up for that one. Uh, but, uh, so you get a good job, by the way? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, you, you don't seem to be complaining about it. You were always complaining about the other jobs. Yeah. You know. Are you hauling stuff around like you used to, or? I am. Yeah. Amazon and FedEx product. Oh, I see. It's, are you, you're not a, you're, you're, you're well, They're not uh, delivery, though. Are, you're not a FedEx guy, though. Oh, okay. I'm not under. Yeah, because I hate FedEx. I hate. So do I. Yeah, the only one, the only one that I find that's been reliable for me is UPS, and so I've told Amazon just send send it by UPS. Don't send it by anything else. So they they now only send by UPS to me. Well, certainly not the people they pay uh, shitbird wages and give shitbird benefits to to directly deliver their product. Well, you know who uh, the you know the so. worst is is the post office. See, they love using the post office because they got to deal with the post office, where it's the cheapest way they can send stuff. And the, the reason it's so cheap is most of the time, fifty percent of the time, the product never got to me. Whenever it went UP, uh, United Postal Service. USPS, you know, so whatever. If Phil were here, he would tell me, well, that's the trouble with the post office. They're a bunch of thieves. And hmm. um, So, oh, I got a couple items here that I, let me reach back and go get them. Uh, first of all, did anybody see the, I, I guess, I, I don't know if this crowd does it, uh, see the interview with R. Kelly? Uh, that CBS did, that What's Your Name on the Morning Show did Oprah's girlfriend, uh, 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 Gail King, uh, in which he just went, he went ballistic. He just went crazy, went nutso. Um, let me, uh, hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me see. Let me get the, uh, the item here. Here we go. Uh, he, um, 
said this morning, he was on uh, the, uh, the, the show, and um, by the way, first of all, R. Kelly uh, went to, he was thrown in jail again today because he was supposed to pay child support and he didn't pay child support. Uh, and so he was only willing to give half of it saying he can't afford the other half. And the uh, half of it was 70. Uh, so, uh, fuck huh? around with underage girls. It's, it's, well, no, but he, his, his, the money he owed was, uh, where is it here? Somewhere here. Uh, he was prepared to pay fifty thousand dollars to sixty thousand dollars, but the judge wants the whole amount, which is one hundred sixty-one thousand dollars. And he said he reason he can't do it is he didn't have the whole amount because he's not able to work. Oh shit! Now wait a minute, wait a minute. You're R. Kelly. You have hit. You had all those hits, and now you can't. You, you what? You spend every penny that comes in. You know. you know what? If I were that judge, I'd have asked for twice that amount just to say that oh, the extra, uh, the extra hundred percent is for interest. Uh, so the guy, I'll tell you, I heard a great quote by the guy today who uh, who died. What was his name? Perry. Uh, Luke Perry. Luke Perry. Luke Perry. And uh, it, it was this. He was being he was interviewed by somebody few, many years ago, and he said, "Well, what's your philosophy in life?" He said, "Save the money and spend the fame." That's good advice. He only had 52 years to do it. Uh, yeah, oh. but that's really great advice. But anyway, what yeah. happened with R. Kelly is he got went on the Gail King morning thing. He got interviewed by her. And in the middle of it, he just broke down. He just went ballistic. You know, he wasn't going to hurt anybody. He just got up and he just said, I'm tired of this. I can't take this. I didn't do any of this. Will people get off my back about this. And it was something to see. If you get a chance, go on. It's on YouTube. You can go find it on YouTube as well. I was going to play it tonight, but then I didn't want to take the chance that all of a sudden, you know, Facebook wouldn't accept the video from it, even though, you know, it, it, it's... Facebook has become the, quite the inane social justice warrior keyboard ninja platform, hasn't it? No, yeah, right, right. Well, I, I also <laughs> wanted to play... Um, and I don't know if you've heard this, but Alex Trebek announced to his audience uh, that he has pancreatic cancer. Now, pretty much you get pancreatic cancer, wow. you start saying goodbye to everybody. You know, uh, unless you can do what my ex-wife did and, and get the operation called the Whipple procedure, but only about 10% of people who have pancreatic cancer qualify for that particular thing. And his is stage four now, which means it's spread. So, yeah. uh, you know, I guess the ultimate jeopardy question uh, would be, uh, where's Alex Trebek? Uh, and, uh, uh, it, you know, it's it. I, I kind of feel bad because for I love that show. I've always loved Jeopardy. Seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, and seemed he seemed like, he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he never he never pissed me off. You know, he and and people piss me off very easily. What about so. Pat Sajak? He always seemed like a nice guy to me. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm at boy. Well, I'm actually, I've I've uh, I've met both of them because they both did my show in San Francisco at one time or another, and they were both just terrific people. I yeah. saw his show on. He did it briefly. He did it like a Sunday evening talk show. No, he no, you're wrong about that. It wasn't a Sunday evening talk show. It was a five night a week talk show. He did the late night that later Letterman took uh, over. Sajak did this. Uh, yeah, he did it. And when he went yeah. to do it, I thought he would be a big success because after having him on my show, when he was on my show, he had such a kind of mean edge to his comedy, to his being funny, that I really liked it. And I said, if he could do that late night, he'd be a sensation. So well, he Sajak went He went on it. He, huh? In the mid-aughts, he had, uh, I remember the title, Pat Sajak Weekends. I think it was what it was called. Well, was that I don't remember, but I do remember the Pat Sajak show, yeah. and that was on Monday through Friday, and he went on and he tried to be the nice guy, and Michael. I went, I went. If he just had that edge, he'd be a success. But he never had the edge. When I heard he was going to do a show, I said, 
he's going to do great. You know, he's going to do terrific. But he, he, you know, again, he went, oh, I've got to be the good guy. It's 8, 1130. You know, I can't have that edgy comedy I want to do. And for time, uh, while he did that, he left the Wheel of Fortune, uh, I believe. So, you know. But he was back screaming and crawling and wanting to, you know. But it's kind of sad to see, you know, that Pat say uh, that the uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, that Alex Trebek. I'm trying to remember his first name. Uh, Alex Trebek, uh, uh, you know, is is dying for all practical purposes. Yeah. You know, and he's only he's about six months younger than I am. So you know, I just ah, it's like we. I keep saying, you know, the good part of getting old is that you're old, and the bad part is all the people you hear that are dying. And you go, why are all these people dying? And they're, they're dying because you're not. So shut the fuck up, you know? So anyway. Um, and another item that I had here, this one really is kind of interesting. The pace of cord cutting accelerated in 2018 with the largest pay TV providers shedding about 2.9 million video subscribers. That means cable systems. Good riddance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nearly right. double the 1.5 million subscriber losses in 2017. Uh, the report notes that the researcher, which tracks providers covering 95% of the U.S. market, found that the gains from virtual MVPD services, a.k.a skinny bundles, I don't know what that is, are not making up for the steep losses in conventional subscribers. That indicates a growing number of viewers are doing without pay TV altogether, and they're, yep. go they're just going and getting things like, uh, 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 let's see here. Uh, oh, by the way, DirecTV and Dish Network suffered the bulk of the losses, collected $2.6 billion. But anyway, it, what they're saying is that, you know, a lot of it's going to stuff like, uh, you know, these, these bundled packages where you go in and for 40 bucks you get all the basic cable channels and stuff like that. But what they don't mention is these cable companies, the same people who are supplying you with the Internet connection. So yeah. they are making money <laughs> off of that after all, you know. Um, so... Uh, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting dynamic. So there's another business, you know, we were talking about businesses that we're losing. It's only a matter of time before we don't have cable systems anymore. Yeah. What they're going to be is the internet service provider and that's going to be it, you know, and, um, um, there are a lot of other businesses that are going to go out of, you know. Uh, out of business. I mean, I think about all the things that used to exist just 20 years ago. Go find a pay phone. Yeah. Do they make or, them anymore? Uh, Do they install them anywhere? I haven't seen one in years. Yeah. Go into your current, your late, your nearest 7 Eleven next time you're there and just say, Can I use the pay phone? <laughs> just see what they, what they probably will give you a look like, What's a pay phone? <laughs> you know, yeah, right. They look like the RCA dog looking into the Victrola. Yeah, mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. I yeah. saw one the other day. I was trying to think where. Oh, uh, I know. I, I was at the downtown convention center in Columbus, Ohio. That's that's where, and they, they had one somewhere. But I mean, it, at a place like that, I guess maybe they still have one here and there or something. But but you, you're right. It was the first time I'd saw one in years. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, I noticed it, you know, like I walked by, I was like, hey, look, there's a payphone if, uh, you know, it'd be like the first thing that an eight-year-old had to ask me how to use. You uh, know? In fact, like, I, I hey, think... Let me show you how to use this. Uh, how many of you, how many of you on this panel actually have a telephone in your house? Uh, not anymore. You do, Jeff. And you do still, Dave? Hardwired? Not well, my parents do. Your parents do, but I'm talking about you. That doesn't I count. I use Skype. No, I or not. No, I don't. No, no it's, which one do I do? Vonage. 
So but, no, I guess I don't. But, but, so that's a VoIP service. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah. no, I don't. Yes, Jeff. The only time I use it is it takes measurements from my heart and sends it to the oh yeah you, you have university to have it for, yeah automatically yeah other than that I they, have no no interest in it and at they all. like it to be a hardwired phone to do that yeah right yeah. they don't want uh, they don't want your cell phone they don't want the cell phone right no. yes uh, yes Charlie. Uh, the only thing I used my landline for the last five years I had it was to locate my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I finally got rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have. You know what happens is you you get yourself a cable, or in my case, I have FiOS, and 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 what they all always do, and I never can quite figure out why they do it, is they. Um, uh, uh, they give you the part of the thing is well you take our you get the internet and you get all the fine TV shows that we have available on our system uh, you can get your HBO through us and so on and so forth and then uh, uh, part of the services you, you, you have to have a phone and and so p it, these cable services all give you this dinky line in that you go out and you get a cheap phone yeah. from Best Buy and okay. it never rings because you're using your cell phone all the time. Oh. You know, what did, what did you turn yourself sideways for? That's Brian. just a temporary thing while I adjust Well, well don't do that because your picture is now not portrait. <laughs> give me, give me like uh, two. Uh, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let's everybody look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we have all these big, big people, and then we have that little person over on the side who's climbing up the side of his wall. Um, um, I, I haven't had a regular phone in, like, decades. I mean, we built our house in 2006, Yeah, and they put phone jacks and everything in, but we never, I've never had one in the house ever, not even once. So yeah. uh, we had phones, our own phones, like cell phones then, so that's, I mean you know that long ago even yeah yeah so i mean uh, uh i i i you know i mean i have this stupid phone that they give me but i never use it it's sitting over there it never rings in fact what i did is i unplugged it and plugged the fax machine into it <laughs> you know uh because i didn't who, who uses it all the calls i get come through my cell phone you know um and uh, I mean, I never thought that day would come. Oh, I always have a phone in the house. I always have to have a hardwired phone in the house. I can't tell you. I think since I've come to New York this time, I don't have a hardwired phone in my house. You know, so. Next, it'll probably be watches, of which I still carry one. What? Next, it'll probably be watches, of which I still well, carry watches, one. Well, watches now, I mean, why do I need a regular watch when I got Mickey who will tell me the time? It's 11, 18. Good night, pal. <laughs> you got yeah. the time here. <laughs> yeah, but I don't even have to look. I can just... It's 11, 18. <laughs> or if I don't want Mickey, I can go over to Minnie and she'll say... It's 11, 18. Good night. See? So... Uh, I, I actually love this watch. I, 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 Good night. Huh? <laughs> I thought no, I thought I'd have real buyer's remorse when I bought the first one, and I thought I'd have even have more buyer's remorse when I bought the second one. I've ne never had a moment of buyer's remorse for this watch, never. I enjoy it. I love it. I, it's fun. I get all my uh, messages from Skype and not Skype, but from uh, Facebook, and my messages from uh, my uh, uh, text account. And they come right up on the phone, uh, t taps me on the wrist, says, "Hey, you got a little message here, you know," and I, it's 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 wonderful. Well, somebody had their hand up, was going to ask me a question. Hey, yeah, have have you seen some of the insane mechanical watches that people are building today, though? No. Some some of these super extreme ones. I saw one where the whole thing is under a dome, and it has it has a center point. It has all these different like all the faces are slowly revolving and turning and doing all this just the, the mechanics of it are mind-boggling wow. some of these insane watches wow 
Yeah, no, like, I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I, I, you know, the well, the last watch that I had was one that was given to me by Penn and Teller. Uh, they made a deal with. They did some commercials or something for Movado, and part of the deal they made with them was for them to give them like twenty watches for their friends. And so I have an engraved watch uh, that uh, that I used for years and years. And one day the battery went out, and I just couldn't find a place to replace the battery. <laughs> I just, you know, it was I would have to go down into the Jewish part of town here, and the, with the jewelers and the guy, you know, guys with the payas, and I just didn't want to go through all of that. So I saw that this was available, and I went out and bought this. And ever since I bought one, and then this is the latest one, uh, it has a bigger face, and it uh, the audio is louder, as you can hear. Oh, come, come on! Oh, Mickey went away. Come on, Mickey. It's eleven twenty-one. Yeah, I I could annoy you with that all night, couldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, um, um, what's been happening in the news today? Uh, uh, today, uh, uh, Cone uh, came out with more checks. Yeah. Uh, something like a total now of uh, seven of them or something, and they were all signed while he was president. In the White House. Yeah, but how are they going to prove that this was for repayment for the Stormy Daniels money? I mean, why did they say to him, okay, he, he said, you owe me $150,000 because that's what I paid Stormy. Maybe it was one hundred thirty-nine, something like that. But you owe me the money for that. Why didn't they say, oh, okay, here, here's a check to reimburse you for putting out the money. Why did they say to him, we want to pay this out over a year? What is Trump that broke? <laughs> Wow. Is he using well, the Ar so. is he using the R Kelly excuse? I mean, I don't have enough money. I mean, why why did they want to stretch it out like that? And I think it was so they could claim that how do you know this is for paying that off? How do you know this isn't just payment for services rendered? That takes too much thought. Trump doesn't have that much thought. Yeah, but his his uh, uh, one of the. Uh, one of the people who was okaying the check was his money guy. You know, th that guy wasn't stupid. You know, but I mean, uh, I, I'm just wondering how, mu how much, what these checks actually say. Do we know this was for reimbursement? I mean, I like to believe it's for reimbursement, but how do you prove that? Does that make sense to you at all, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, uh, I, I think... I think you're correct that the, the documents that, that we've seen mm -hmm. are say there's checks, there's money. Yeah. And, and it just it happens to have Trump's signature on it. Whatever that signature is, I can't figure yeah, out what that, that is. Scrabble thing. It's like yeah. he took a signature and then he squashed it. Did he hold the check up when he was done? <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, right. Look, I made good. I did my I did my uh, thing on there. Yep, yep, <clears throat> yeah. But I, you know, I don't, I don't. I didn't even hear about the more checks. But I think Democrats need to be careful, though, just to make sure that they stay on track. Because even if they had the checks, in my opinion, and in the memo line, it said reimbursement for paying off. Storm Storm Dan, Star, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I don't even know that I would care. Now, if it's a campaign finance violation, uh, fine, and that wants to be pursued by the Justice Department or whoever, I don't have a problem with that. But I'm just saying, even if they had that, and Dem I don't want Democrats to run around and call that the smoking gun. It needs to be gone now because to me, I look at that and say, I, that's nothing to me. I don't, I don't care about that. I mean... If, if they want to run Trump out of office, you know, and use that extraordinary process, to me, we need something a lot better than he paid money to a woman to be quiet about a sexual relationship because they, they need to stay out of the hypocritical lane. I yeah, mean, but, but to that's, pay, the, that's to, what the Republicans would do, but in to my opinion. Pay, they, they to pay a woman for that. her silence while you're running for president. Yeah. And, after, and, and when you are president seems to carry with it a certain amount of chicanery, you know. Yes, uh, 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 Brian's got his hand up. 
I pretty much agree with what that gentleman just said there. Uh, they Josh. get the critical link and all that. I'm sorry? Josh is his name. Josh, I couldn't remember your name. I, I'm sorry, but sorry. Uh, it's been a while. Nevertheless, uh, I got to go and get ready and all that happy horseshit since I work at 2 o'clock in the morning. And yeah, well, anything you have to say about Trump before you leave? Yeah, he can go fuck himself. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, but then that, again, you already knew that. Well, so. I, uh, yeah, but I didn't know he could fuck himself. I didn't think his penis was <laughs> well, big you know, enough. Literally, it would be hard with that tiny penis of his, and, his, and those tiny hands of his aren't going to help the matter any, <laughs> anymore. Little... With that fat fucking ass of his. I mean, maybe, I know, I, you know, three months ago, I was fat. I was fatter myself, but uh, goddamn, I wasn't that heavy. <laughs> Nevertheless. Yeah. I bet you all to do, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, hey, connect tomorrow. Uh, I'll be able to talk to Jack, too. But, when, no, we'll whenever see. you get a chance, we love hearing from you, Brian. You know that. And especially the new thinner Brian. <laughs> well, because we haven't seen you in about about a month, maybe? Yeah. Or so? It's about a month. We can, I can see the difference. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So. yeah, I've been trying. Yeah. Nevertheless. I gotta go. So okay. I'll talk to you okay. See you later, cool. ladies and gentlemen. Brian Ludwig. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate the call. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice of him. Yeah, I guess I was just saying. I just don't want Democrats to basically uh, be too overzealous about you know the whole the whole entire Stormy Daniels issue from start to finish because I I just I I guess if if you can't even take people like myself who dislike Trump strongly, okay? I mean, can't explain how much enough I'd love to see him gone and like to see him humiliated in the process just for personal satisfaction. Mm -hmm. If I look at it and say, yeah, I really couldn't care less about that, then you're not going to be able to get the majority of Americans to go along with pursuing that avenue, in my opinion. You, you see what I'm saying? I just think politically it would be a mistake to try to exploit too much out of the Stormy Daniels issue Unless some evidence comes forward that there was some sort of blackmail or violence on his part, you know, to, to keep her quiet. If it was just money, you know, I could care less. Well, now, they, uh, if they had some kind of smoking gun proof that he sent, you know, wise guys to her place and they beat her up and said, don't talk, then, you know, that's something totally different. But as far as it goes so far, I mean, if, I don't care if he's got 100 checks. And like I say, they all say in the memo line, you know, payment to porn star to be quiet. I mean... I don't fucking care. Let's focus on the real laws that he broke as far as I'm yeah, yeah. The, I'll tell you what the problem is here that I have with it. I, uh, uh, listen, I don't care that he had sex with a porn star. I don't, I don't care that he had sex uh, while his wife was just giving birth to their latest baby, okay? And that, that's when this took place. Uh, I don't care about any of that. That's between he, his wife, his conscience, and so on. <clears throat> But when it is now a method uh, that uh, it money is being passed to her to shut her up so that he can win an election, I think then we have some questions to ask mm -hmm. because his responsibility as a human being when he becomes president or when he's running for president, the rules change. You know, they're not what they once were. You know, he could do this do this kind of shit when he was a, the host of The Apprentice. He didn't have, he, you know, there were no election laws involved in The Apprentice. But uh, I, I just, you know, yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, his obstruction of justice is much worse than, than anything he done about paying off a porn star. I mean, he admitted on TV that he got rid of, of, of uh, Comey because he was uh, investigating him. That is casebook obstruction well, of justice. Oh, of course. It's absolute tech, textbook, uh, but the, the the point is that um, uh, the Democrats, uh, and I think you'll agree with this, Josh, have to be very careful about right. how they handle this. Uh, they, I, to begin with, if I were them, I would not rush to automatic judgment about doing an a, a impeachment. I think maybe impeachment should be the last thing on the table. Uh, there are a lot of other things you can do before that to slow this guy down. Uh, you can embarrass him publicly. That's one, one thing you can do. But if you try to impeach him, you make him a, 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 a person who 
especially his base will look upon as being put upon and vilified and picked on by the Democrats and so on. Uh, and if you started impeachment tomorrow, how long would it take mm. before you got him out of office? Well, he's mm. going to be running in another two years. What you mm -hmm. want to do is bring out all this information so that people, <clears throat> the next time they go to the polls, are armed with the truth. That's what yeah. you want. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think that they can move on impeachment uh, until the Mueller report, you know, is out. Right. I mean, I would. Th I mean, unless something else happens that none of us can foresee. I mean, there's some kind of, you know, like we've said all along, some videotape comes out tomorrow of him, you know. Uh, ordering a murder you know, or something. I mean, you know, nothing, nothing is going to come. Well, you know, he, pre the Mueller report he predicted done. he could get away with that if he did it. Yeah. You know what? Well, I mean, I don't even know that that's, and it, that's a half-hearted <laughs> exaggeration, but it, it's also not though. Right. right. I mean, uh, I don't even know. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but there were uh, a couple, uh, I heard a couple historians talking on a show the other day. And, you know, they basically were kind of aghast that there's a pretty distinct possibility that Watergate, for example, would not even be prosecuted today. Right. I mean, and yeah. that that's a decent theory. Well, uh, Watergate would not so be politically uh, divided now that Watergate would probably be, you know, overlooked because someone like Trump. Well, yeah, sure. We broke in and, you know, we tried to look at their files, but. Fucking everybody does that, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there was a criminal event taking place in Watergate. Uh, you know, it was a break-in. It was, right. a, it yeah. was, uh, 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 and and that's that's basically that's a very basic crime. Uh -huh. So I don't know if we would necessarily get away with it. I just don't know if the president would be implicated, or that yeah. he could could stonewall. Uh, Trump could stonewall against it. Nixon didn't have the ability, you know. There, it wasn't in his DNA. He could well, only. He also didn't have Fox News. He, you're right. He didn't have Fox News, uh, and you had a news uh, core that was more into getting a story, you know, and and to getting at the truth in those days. You know, the New York, the Washington Post, for instance, tread very carefully on that story when it happened. You know, they didn't just go willy-nilly into it, but when they started getting the the facts, they started thinking about, well, we guess we got to publish this, you know, because this is what newspapers do. We're not trying to sell newspapers, we're trying to do what a news what what our what our readers expect us to do. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I honestly can't answer, no one probably can whether or not Watergate, for example, would be prosecuted criminally today. Um, but I certainly don't think Watergate it would likely be prosecuted as politically and through impeachment today, you know, mm -hmm. a, as it was. I mean, I I just think it, even if something well, that well, bad Nixon, would you gotta you now, gotta remember, John Nixon wasn't impeached; he got out before they could. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, but that's what I'm saying. But I don't know that it would get that far uh, in, in today's climate for Trump. I don't think that, I mean, honestly, I think if the Mueller report comes out, and even if it's really, really bad, I don't, I just don't think that you'll have Republicans, you know, do the right thing. They, I they, mean, they, I to, guess it, that's my look what they were right, do, but. Look at what they were doing at the Cone hearings. They, they were mm -hmm. making an excuse for everything. They were yeah. trying, it was <laughs> almost like, you know, like we say that you don't want to take a woman who's been raped and make her the victim. Well, you don't want to take Cone, who's trying to tell you the truth of, as he knows it, and suddenly make him a victim. And what they were doing is they were making him the victim in that hearing. Every time it was a Republican's time, it was, you're a liar. You've lied to so-and-so. There was never any questions like, well, wait a minute. How many, let me try to get to the bottom of this and maybe doing a kind of like um, uh, cross-examination. Of him, they didn't. They didn't do any of that. They just did nothing but throw at her accusations at him, and I felt he was kind of like a woman who'd been raped and nobody would believe, <laughs> you know. And that they go, "Well, you're probably just a slut anyway," right. you know. Right, but that, so, but I—that's what I'm saying is I—I I just don't think that 
no matter how bad it comes out to be for him, I don't know that it'll move the American public that much, but and I don't know that it will move uh I don't think it'll move the Republican Party that much. I mean, it just they've shown themselves to me to this point to be people just so desperate to retain power that, you know, they've turned themselves into, I said the other day, they're they're sycophants and hypocrites. I mean, you know, and and it's kind of sad. I mean, it's what makes me say I could never vote for one of them. I mean, even like every... They're the strangest party because every once in a while, one of their members starts to act like he has a little bit of integrity. And I start to say in the back of my mind, well, you know, I could almost think about voting for that guy for something. They they fucking turn around and remind me of why I was wrong. I'll tell you <laughs> something. You want, I'll give you a good example. You can take the most principled Republican, one who you admire— and put him in a certain situation, and he will suddenly turn Republican. Right. And I'll give you the example that I have. John McCain, when he ran for president, I liked him before he ran for president. I thought of all the Republicans that I knew about. He was the most principled. And while I didn't agree with all of his positions, I trusted him, you know? And yep. we're all tired tonight, aren't we? You yawned a little bit. Jeff's yeah. nodding out. Uh no, but what I'm saying is, is that we, you know, um, uh, it's just, uh, what was the point I was trying to make now? I forget now. Well, you just now. John I mean, McCain when he ran oh, for Oh, John president. McCain when he ran yeah. for president. Then he ran for president and he became the asshole I never would vote for, you know? And he, and he, and he went out and got an, a, a, a woman to run with him who was an even bigger asshole. Yeah. You know, and then I went. What happened to John McCain? Now, finally, when he didn't win and he went back into Congress at the last part of his life, he did some very principled things. And he was the kind of person who I said engenders the best of what a Republican can be. But where was that John McCain when he was running for president? Yeah. Or but and the same thing goes with so many members of the party. I mean, there's a there's a headline or, you know, one of those lines at the bottom of the screen right now on MSNBC that says, uh, in regards to the national emergency, you know, Mitt Romney has made a decision, uh, but won't say whether or not he'll side with Trump. It's like, by the way, by the way, I'm sure that that bottom lower third that you're reading starts out with the words breaking news, doesn't it? Uh, I think it does. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, it that might break, have a minute ago. breaking news it's, never leaves the screen. It's, uh, there's always right. some breaking news. Yeah. So it's like, so we're so bad off now that, you know, even someone like Mitt Romney, who ran and lost, mm-hmm. but then in the during that period, conducting himself with, you know, even you, if you didn't agree with him politically, mm-hmm. seemed like an honorable person. OK. And since that period of time has seemed like, you know, a, a decent person or whatever. And now what? So he's going to come out and vote for this fucking national emergency now. I mean, I mean, g- g- give me a fucking break. All right. I mean. This this is what I'm talking about. And this about. is a guy it's who like, doesn't even like Trump. I mean, he right? hates Trump. I mean, it's like, are, are you so desperate to kiss his ass, or are you so desperate to already start worrying about? I mean, he can't be worried about re-election. He just got he's elected. Got he's got years. five more years. I mean, it's like, if anyone would be in a position to do the right thing, it would be Mitt Romney, and he's. On the fence, I mean, and, and Mitt Romney break. doesn't need to play to Trump's base because his base is uh, in 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 uh, where do you call it in Utah, Utah. and oh. his base, uh, who may love Trump, some of them would side so, with Romney before they would side with Trump on anything because he's a Mormon. So, so why would he be on the fence about? you know, the border declaration or the national emergency declaration. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand. It's it's beyond my Well, what's weird what's about that, on. what's weird about that is you have a lot of other Republicans who are thinking of going over to the other side and voting against the border mm-hmm. wall, you know, right. against the appropriations. But uh, it's, I'm almost, but I'm shocked in a way that this isn't, you know, uh, damn near unanimous, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just shocked that it's even to the point where a Mitt Romney is on the fence. And now maybe Romney votes against it, and this whole rant of mine is moot, 
in a few days, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's not moot at the moment because he hasn't come out and said that he's against it. He's come out and said he's made a decision, but he's not going to let you know what it is yet. We, if, if this were 10 years ago, no matter who the president was, let alone if it were Barack Obama, we all know the answer if it were, but if this were 10 or even just 12, 13 years ago, th there'd be no fence to be on. They'd all be going completely crazy about such a, 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 a presidential power grab on a matter yeah. as trivial as this. Well, And I'm not saying border security is trivial. But I'm saying it's, it's, we all know that that's what this is. It's a, it's an end around the legis the legislative branch. It's it's an executive power. It has nothing to do with border security. I mean, yeah. that we all everyone fucking knows that. I mean, even the people that are going to vote for it know that. Dave, what are your thoughts on all of this? Uh, politics, uh, uh, just like it always has. Politics just annoys me and makes me upset. In the same way that uh, you know, remember the show Lost. I had to stop watching it because uh, at the end of the first season because I just wanted them to cut off all the heads of all the people that that, that were opposing them and put them on spikes up and down the beach. And yeah. I decided I decided that that wasn't a healthy place for me to go, so I stopped being involved in it. Well, I it also wasn't going to be a healthy place for ABC to go because they wanted to stretch that thing out to five sure. seasons. Sure. Yeah. You know. So My solution would have ended it at the single season done yeah yeah it wasn't Line until the fourth the beach, season that which we've... was which is why i don't want to be in charge of it yeah 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 well you know like i'm i'm thinking about you with that lovely daughter of yours and the fact that i said to her you know she's gonna have to live with these things you're gonna have to live with them too but uh uh you know, I probably, I don't know, maybe I'll live to be 100. Who knows? You know, but by then I won't know where I am, so I won't care. Although I did interview Just a guy. Just stay around long enough for the nanites. Tomorrow night I'm going to have an interview I did uh, with this guy, Ted Randall, who was one of the first top 40 disc jockeys ever because he was on the big top 40 station in San Francisco in top 40 hit. And he also became the first uh, broadcast consultant, which then became a booming business. And um, I, just, I just wanted to do an interview with him because I wanted to say thank you for the help he gave me early on in life. And um, turns out he's 92 years old. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we radio guys, we can keep going. You know, it, it's game show hosts that don't last long. Uh but, you know, uh, in fact, it's, it's funny. I, I don't want to blow the interview. Well, I'll, I said to him, I said, you, I said you move, he moved to Canada, and he lives in Canada now. And he was born in, like, I don't know, Sacramento, someplace like that, Santa Rosa, I think. Uh, and I said to him, um, uh, so you get that, uh, do, are you a citizen now of Canada? He says, yeah, I became a Canadian citizen. I said, so you get the medical care? He says, oh, yeah. I said, how is it? He says, let me put it this way. If I had stayed in the United States and used the American health care system, I'd be dead by now. <laughs> so, congratulations, 92 because of Canada. You know? <laughs> uh, but uh, it'd be interesting to listen to the interview tomorrow night. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's not, not a great interview, but it's a good interview. And, uh, and part of the reason it isn't great is, you know, when I get to be 92, I hope I have as many of my marbles going as he does. I mean, uh, that I'm as vital as, as he is. But still, uh, 92 slows you down, you know, no matter how you want to handle it. Um, but Jeff and I will get old together, so... Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Uh, we got about uh, we got about fifty about fifteen minutes left. Let's see here. What can we talk about? Uh, we you know we were talking about stuff that no longer exists. Can you name other things that no longer exist? Like for instance, we all know how many here. Anybody here own an LP? <laughs> I got seven hundred of them in the next room. Really? And and why yeah. do you have seven hundred LPs in the next room? Because I bought them 40 years ago, and I keep them. 
I have no reason to get rid of them. Really? I sold all mine. Well, except for well, a few so that make me an offer. Huh? Yeah, no, I I got I got about well, I got I had a lot of them. I had more than you have. And I got it I think I got something like $5,000 for the whole lot. You know. Uh but I I and I have a couple of records, I guess LPs that I still own. I also have a a bunch of laser discs if anybody wants laser discs. Wow. <laughs> Which was, by the way, the best technology at the time, you know. Even though they were these huge 12-inch discs that every hour you had to turn them over. And then I finally bought a machine they came out with where it automatically played the other side, you know. But that nice was... Nice Pioneer huh? model. Yeah. The nice Pioneer model. Pi I, I, I did that as well. Yeah. And and uh, uh, then the then the CD came the DVD came along, and uh, uh, goodbye to the the laser disc, you know the well, the, hmm? the original Criterion collection was released on on the the big yeah. discs. Oh yeah, on the laser disc. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, then then the C DVD came along, and the DVD was. I find that the shelf life of a particular technology gets shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. You know, like there was a, a radio came in in the 20s, and then in the 50s it was supplanted by television, which was then uh, supplanted by, well, kind of supplanted by cable oddly enough, because cable could then put on all these channels that didn't mm -hmm. have airspace okay and now everything's happening faster and faster and faster i have all these dvds here i've converted at least half of them to video files because there's no reason to have a fucking dvd anymore when was the last time you opened one of those and watched it uh, well I, any any of them that i want to watch the ones the main ones i like which are all kind of put away uh, I have uh, on uh, on a f file on computer files. But, but out yeah. of that shelf, when was the last time you took one out? I mean, uh, with, with me, it's last Christmas is the last time I actually uh, used the, anything. I the, the three D ones I do because okay. I I have well I have one three D set now. They don't make TV. Oh, but there's something they don't make anymore. They stopped making three D <laughs> TV sets. Yeah. <sighs> If you want to watch 3D, the only way you can do it now is these the projectors have 3D. Uh, but you can't get a TV set with 3D in it. Because, the, well, it, it was a, st a stupid decision on their part. Because what they did is they came out with the 3D TV sets and then decided we'll start, we'll charge a premium for them. Even though the technology that went into it was like in the in the case, one case it was just a little chip that cost them 15 cents you know uh, they could have kept making 3d tv sets in fact all your your dvd players that you buy blu-ray players you buy now are capable of playing 3d discs but they're you know they're not putting out any more 3d discs in america because there are no more 3d tv sets so i've got one sitting in my in my bedroom that's a 4K 3D, and it's terrific, and I, I hope it never blows because the old 3D TV set did blow, but I didn't get rid of it because I'm going to get it fixed because you can get good money for a 3D TV set these days. You put it on eBay, and people are paying upwards to four to $5,000 oh, for a set that maybe cost 1500 bucks originally. So I'm going to fix mine. I think it's an investment. But I love 3D. When I was a kid, I saw every 3D movie made. So when 3D came out, I went, wow. And they just didn't get behind it. They Plus, they didn't come out with one system that worked. I went with the one that LG used in which you could take the 3D glasses home from the movie theater, put them on, and they worked yeah. on that. Set. The other one was, a, was an electronic thing in which you had these fluttering glasses and and they, they they were fighting between the two, and the answer was the the shutter system was not a good system, but the one that everybody was used to, the glasses you wear in the movie theater, was perfect. Yes. 
you know. Yeah, but they, they, so they, and then they said, well, they're not selling so fast. Well, they're not selling fast because you're selling them for like four or five hundred dollars more, and people aren't going to pay four or five hundred dollars more for 3D. Just give it as an added feature. You remember how fast 4K TV sets came down? Yeah. I just bought one for my living room, 55 inch, 4K with a built in Roku. It's a Roku TV set, right? Called TLC or TRC or something, TCL. How much do you think that cost me? 55 inch, 4K, good looking picture, built in Roku. How much? Probably like 300 bucks. $365. Right. We have we have two of them. We have one downstairs. The the we got sixty five inch same same thing with the built in Roku. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Picture's them. great. Picture's Fantastic. great. Fantastic. And I don't have to go out and buy another Roku for the new TV set. Right. Because it's all built into it. So you know, um, uh, but the fact is that when four K first came out, what were they charging? Three thousand, four thousand dollars. Yeah. Within a year, they were down to the cheaper prices. And within two years, they're down to what they are now. And they're going to try and foist 5G on you next. Or, or is it uh, uh, the 8K? 8K. They're going to know the four, 5K they're going to try next. 5K? Yeah. Well, I thought they were doing, I thought they were going to 8. Well, there is a, there is a little bit of a, um, of a uh, conundrum here. Your eyes don't see, can't see 4K. Yeah. Your eyes are not capable of seeing 4K. <laughs> so why do you need 5K or 8K? The, the, in the movie theaters that you go to, all those screens that are projecting video onto the screen, because you're not seeing film anymore, mm -hmm. what are they? Right. It's 4K. It's exactly the same thing you're getting on your TV set at home. So now my newest question is, is the next thing to go out of style movie theaters? Well, that's just what I was getting ready to say. I mean, yeah. that was what I was curious about. I don't know if the answer is yes or no. I mean, people, I, I mean, we don't really go. I mean, we go maybe like once a year or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Went to three movies in the theaters last year. We go less and less because any movie <clears throat> I want to see today, three months from now, will be available on dvd or other nefarious means yeah or yeah. i can just order it up on for five bucks on on my cable system and uh on my 4k screen with my surround sound it's gonna be like i'm sitting in the fucking movie theater you know so i mean and you don't even have to wear pants and you don't have to wear <laughs> exactly <laughs> They don't even have to wear pants. No, you can don't have to wear pants. That's it. You know. Yes. Sir. And you, you could have better popcorn at home. Yeah. Well, you're not going to get um, the. Let me see here. What did I think it was? They they once said that the popcorn in the box, right, is cheaper for them than the box itself. Okay. <laughs> They should make the boxes so you can eat them when you're through with the popcorn, you know. But no, you get a oh hey what I got a seven buck the dollar bucket of popcorn. Wow, that's wonderful. How much how much popcorn's in here? How much did you spend on popcorn? <laughs> oh, about three and a half cents. Yeah. You know the the thing that people don't realize is that the the snack counter is the profit center for the movie theaters. Yeah. And the reason it's the profit center is because the movies aren't. The first week that a movie is in a theater, all the money goes to the movie company. Yeah. They, <clears throat> they make no money off the ticket sales. To the second week, there's something that goes to 95% goes to the movie company. It isn't until about the fourth or fifth week that they get down to something like only 70% gets to the movie company. So where do they make their money? By selling you a $7 box of popcorn, you know, or a $5 box of milk duds. Uh, yeah. You know, that's where the money is. And um, I don't know about you, I'm very weird this way, but I can't go to a movie theater and not buy the popcorn. 
Even when I was on a diet and I really didn't eat it, I had to buy the popcorn. And my Part wife, the ritual. huh? Yeah. That's the experience, yeah. Yeah, my wife had to have it. Do you know, by the way, this is a little piece of information you, you never needed to know. Do you know why popcorn came into movie theaters and why there was no popcorn during silent films? Okay. Don't know. Why? With silent films, in order to understand what was going on, you had to read the dialogue on the screen. If you dipped your hand into a box of popcorn, your head, head always goes down and looks into the popcorn. Yeah. And then you might miss a dialogue slide. So popcorn didn't come in till sound movies came in. And then they had popcorn. Because you could look down, you could still hear what was going on and so on. Isn't that an interesting fact you never needed yeah. to know? The useless information you will find out when you listen to this program. Uh, but I, I hope you will take that away. Also, I've been watching, um, I, I, you know, I get some TV shows by nefarious means, and they're running uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in, uh, in England. They're, uh, they run about eight weeks or something of it. And it's with a guy who's on top, was on Top Gear. What's his name? You know, the, the big guy, Jeremy. Uh, I know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's the host of the show, does a very good job of it. And the reason I love watching it is because even the simplest questions I don't know the answers to because they're all for a British audience. And <laughs> one of the questions, I could answer it, but a lot of people couldn't, was uh, in the United States... What is the word they use for nappies? <laughs> Diapers. Huh? Diapers. Yeah, but you knew that. Anybody else know that? Because no. you didn't know what nappies were. And that was the 100-pound <laughs> question. Okay? So to somebody in England, so I love watching it because, it, and so one of the facts I came, I came out with is they said, uh, what is the name of the airport in Liverpool? And I looked at all the names, and I didn't know, and I should have figured it out quickly. Did you know there's an airport in Liverpool named after John Lennon? An airport oh. named after nope. John Lennon. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot about England from... That would make sense. Of, oh. out of probably a list of other ones, if they were all real. Yeah. Uh, but who wants to be a millionaire? British edition. And it's, it's, it's more difficult if you're an American because all the questions are just from a, a British perspective. Uh, they said there's an there's a area in, New York, in uh, London called Isle of Dogs, and they said, what's the wharf in that area? And it was Canary Wharf was the answer, but none of us would have known that a a answer. In fact, none of, all of us thought Isle of Dogs was a cartoon. Mm. You know? <laughs> so anyway, hey, there's the theme. Boy, it's been nice. Dave, good good hearing from you again. I hope we can we do this more often, Dave? I really hope so. I really hope so. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I've always I've missed you. You're an intelligent guy and you know. Just like Thank Josh you. is an intelligent guy, and just like Charlie is an intelligent guy, and like Jeff is an intelligent guy, and like Brian's an intelligent guy. And even Bree who sent me a note or something, but didn't call tonight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I really thank you all for being with me tonight. And uh, again, it's been another night of feeling like uh, like we were swimming naked because there was nothing impeding our swim. You know, <laughs> our balls could f uh, could float freely and without without Phil. Uh, anyway, <laughs> everybody, uh, why don't you? Uh, I'll, I'll wave at you, and why don't you wave goodbye to the audience? Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That's what our citizen panel is all about. Good night of talk and discussion. And gosh, good time to be had by all. Coming up next, uh, a repeat of the intersection because uh, Jack is taking the night off. And then, uh, let's see here. Tomorrow night at 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin and the Exchange. At 10 o'clock, I'll be back again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.